The following podcast is a production of the Podpire Network. Find and listen to our podcasts at thepodpirenetwork.com or wherever you enjoy your podcast. The Podpire Network, a family of inspired podcasts. In the last two or three years, I've lost a lot of family and friends. And to be honest with you, I'm just thankful to be here. Many of my folks that passed didn't pass from COVID either, as if it matters, because a loss is a loss. And prayers go out to the families of anyone that's lost someone, because I know exactly what you're going through. But I also know the other side of pain that has nothing to do with grieving. But it's the how in the hell am I going to pay for this funeral and these services? Now, that's a different type of pain. Yes, this is still an unapologetic relationship podcast. So this episode ain't grim, ain't just talking about death, but really our lives after someone close to us dies and some of the messes many of them leave us with. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are rocking with Jay Riggins, and this is the Unapologetic Relationship Podcast, where you get all the juice and the tea about how am I going to handle this relationship? How can I make this relationship better with my friends, my in-laws, my kids, and most importantly, how can I keep people from getting on my nerves? Because I'm all about self-preservation, I'm just saying. You ain't going to drive me crazy, especially when I don't deserve it. This week's episode is a very sensitive subject, but as always, it's one that needs to be talked about. And of course, we'll dive in as soon as we pay some bills. Holla. What's good, people? Before I get started... Let me give a shout out to my homeboy, Christopher Williams, for making my intro outro. The dude is super talented, DJ, producer, etc. And that track ain't even his new stuff. You can contact him at DJ KRS, K-A-S-H. And that's at DJ KRS, K-A-S-H on IG. What up, homie? Thanks for doing what you do. Appreciate you. So before the break, I was talking about you know, family and friends that has passed away in the last few years, particularly my family and friends that has passed away in the last few years. And, you know, how much um, the family and friends that are left, what they're going through, you know, because of him. It's a horrible pain. I don't know, you know, if you've never had someone close to you pass away, it's a, it's a bad thing. It's a horrible pain, something I don't wish on my worst enemies. But it happens, you know. We come, we go. Um, it's bad enough to have to deal with the pain of losing someone, but it's even worse when you have to deal with some foolishness behind the death that, that could have been avoided. And I'm just going to stop beating around the bush. What I am talking about is that paperwork. Yes, that paperwork. What are you talking about, Jay? What are you talking about? Let me ask y'all this. How many of y'all have a will? And this is rhetorical because I can't, I can't hear y'all. But all my listeners, how many of you have a will? Right? And I'm not going to say that everyone knows what a will is. Or what what a will is about. I can't expect that. Some people never had to write one. Never, you know, went through a situation where their one was needed. So I'm going to break it down. Um, A will is basically a document that you identify what's in what's going to whom. In the event of your demise, if something happens to you, you die, who gets what, basically? Right. And the reason why it's important is because people should have to grieve. Let me let me let me start that off. Grieving is bad enough. People shouldn't have to be fighting over property and arguing back and forth with this person and that person over your assets while they're grieving. If you had a piece of paper that says Johnny gets my train set and Sally gets my car, it's easy. A court of law gives Sally this, gives Johnny this, and it's done. 
if you don't have a will, what's going to happen is you're going to have everybody coming out the woodworks trying to get what you have. I don't care if it's even a little bit. If you live in a hut with no furniture, somebody's going to be fighting over that hut. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we do. That's what humans do. Somebody dies, we want this. We want that. Who's getting that? Who's getting that? That's what we do. But it shouldn't even get to that point, is what I'm saying, people. It, that shouldn't even happen. And I'm going to tell you another thing. Do you know how many times we escape death a year? We escape death probably 30 times a year and don't even realize it. I made that number up. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm just saying, realistically, that's, there's some truth to that, right? We escape death many times a year and we don't even realize it because we take, we think things are so frivolous. We just eh, go with the flow type people. Drive drunk, drive high. You know what I'm saying? Drive without our glasses at night. <laughs> All kind of crazy stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, for y'all Jeep, Jeepers, for y'all Jeepers creepers out there, that, you know, messing with the married dude, messing with the married woman, going to their house because the spouses, you know, husband or the wife ain't there. They at work or they out of town. You know, you're, t you know, you're putting your life at risk. You know how many people have came home early? You know how many incidents has happened when somebody came in their house and this person don't belong there? And I'm not trying to incite no violence. I'm not, trying, you know. I don't want to scare y'all Jeepers Creepers off from, do from doing what y'all do. I'm just saying that is a reality to some people. And some people ain't here to tell you about it. I'm just saying. But, you know, there's worse things than, you know, I want to scare you. Like I said, you Jeepers Creepers, y'all do what y'all do. Uh, don't, don't mind me. Uh, I saw a lady the other day driving with a dog on her lap. She was smoking a cigarette and she was texting. I can't make this stuff up. And she had a passenger. I don't care if the passenger was asleep. Look, you need to hold this dog. You ain't driving. Uh, passengers got responsibilities on road trips. I don't care if we go into the grocery store. You, your responsibility is to do everything that I don't want to do while I'm driving. Just don't touch the radio. That's me. You know, the air, the air conditioning, all that is me. Just sit, sit back, but hold his dog while I'm driving, you know. But she had, she had the dog, the cigarette, and she was texting. Clearly putting her life at risk because of, you know, I guarantee she was not thinking that I'm not going to come home because I'm doing all three of these things. She wouldn't even think about that, but it could have happened. You know, driving drunk, driving high. Hmm. There's plenty of times when. Could have went bad or you could have injured somebody else's life or you could or you could have killed somebody else that wasn't expecting it, expected to come home. You know, what I mean, hitting runs and drunk drivers and all that foolishness is going on. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect by no means. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but it happens. I've put I've put my own life in jeopardy a few times. And we don't realize we just take life for granted and think we're going to come home and everything's going to be good. That's not always the case, right? I know there's certain things, especially certain cultures, that we don't want to talk about. A lot of us feel like if we talk about death, we're speeding it up. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're speeding up the process. You know, it's going to come to fruition sooner than we think. But that's, that's not the case. There are certain things that need to be discussed, taken care of, not just discussed, taken care of. This needs some, some action needs to go along with these words. Um, and the reason why is because the person that's left here that's grieving should not have to go through all this extra foolishness. 
that's not their, that shouldn't be their responsibility to, to, to fight amongst siblings and girlfriends and all these other people that said that they was promised some stuff. I'm grieving over you. All you had to do was get a piece of paper, write down, this goes to such and such, such and such, such and such gets this, and that's it. Now, everybody that wants to argue and and fight over what they didn't get, ain't nothing they can do about it. Not in the court of law. I personally, my wife has gone through that situation. So I personally know someone who's went through that situation where her mom did not have a will. Right. Or the will was not clear. You know what I'm saying? So the husband or whoever, you know, gets this. And it's up to him to decide who gets what. If the will is not clear and specific. That's another thing. You can write a will, but if it's not clear and specific, it really doesn't matter. You might as well not even have one. Here's the thing, people. You are doing your family and friends and those people that are left in injustice by not having a will. It takes two seconds to write down on a piece of paper. This car goes to this person. My house goes to this person. My shoes go to this person. This ham sandwich goes to that person. It's real simple. I know that we don't like to talk about death. But are we that selfish? Because we don't want to talk about death. We're going to have a bunch of people when I die. uh, Fighting over my stuff. And God forbid if it goes to uh, with probate and it's tied up in the court systems for years because it happens. And nobody gets nothing. Not the person that not the only child. You know what I'm saying? That's supposed to get everything because just she she or he thinks because I'm the only child. Yeah, I'm, everything goes to me. No, that's not the case in certain inst- instances. If, if there's no will. The state has to decide who's that goes, who that goes to. The courts have to decide who that goes to. It's not automatic just because you think you're the only child and okay, it automatically goes to me. That's not always the case. But it shouldn't be the case. Right? A person should write a will to avoid all their, their, the people that's left from going through all of that. You know how many fights? In arguments and people still mad at each other to this day, family members that don't talk, friends that no longer talk, kids don't talk to their parents and whoop de whoop because somebody has died and there was no will. So they had to fight over this and fight over that. That's crazy. People shouldn't have to go through that. You shouldn't be that selfish. To as to where you're like, oh, well, when I'm dead and gone, you know, that's somebody else's problem. You should not be that selfish. That's selfish. You should be better than that. Because you don't, you don't, and here's the thing. If, if the shoe was on the other foot and you had to deal with it, you would not be that happy. I've personally experienced, my wife has personally experienced something like this. So I know how, how it feels. She knows firsthand how it feels for somebody not to have a will or not to have a precise will that pinpoints this person gets this, blah, 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 blah. And it's broken down. It's real easy. It's not rocket science. You're not writing a thesis for a college paper. It doesn't have to be a 20 page paper. It could be one sheet of paper that's notarized and somebody witnesses doing your, your right sound mind and body to write this and it's done. But you can save a lot of heartache by not being selfish. You dig? Like, I, I don't get it. I know it's a contra. I know a will is a controversial subject, but. 
you're putting a bur- an unnecessary burden over people that don't deserve it. And I know you probably don't, you know, don't see it that way, but that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. You're putting an unnecessary. So this person is not only have crying over your death and mourning over your death. Now they might have to go head to head with the cousin or the, or the, or the girlfriend that you promised this and you promised that because you don't have, you don't have sense enough to write it down. And I'm going to be honest. You didn't have sense enough to write it down. You take the kid gloves off. You didn't have sense enough to write down what this person gets, what this person gets, what this person gets. So they won't be battling and going back and forth if something happens to me. If you don't have a will, you are selfish. You are selfish. It takes two seconds. I don't care. And people, I don't don't even have a lot. If you got a candy bar, it's, somebody got to get somebody need somebody want that candy bar. If you don't have a, I don't, I don't own my house. I don't blah blah blah. I ain't got this, and I got some people just want a piece of you, memorabilia, just to remember you by. You understand? My wife knows firsthand how that feels. I just want something to remember you by. But if that will is not specific or, or, or whatever, and it goes to this person, and that person ain't got sense enough to make sure other family members get their share or get something to remember them by, it is what it is. And there's some ignorant, stupid people out there that will do stuff like that. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. I could feel my blood pressure going. I'm just talking about this, um, but it's it's something that needs to be it's something that needs to be talked about. There's a lot of things, like I said, in certain cultures, in certain families, we sweep under the rug. This is not one of those things that needs to be swept under the rug and bottled up and and hidden away. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, when you're dead and gone. Somebody else is going to have to clean up the mess if there is one. There shouldn't be one. You see what I'm saying? Another thing that plagues us families. You ready? It's called life insurance. I know. I know that's a sensitive subject. It's called life insurance, right? And I'm not, ins- I'm not insensitive. I'm not talking about people who had situations where they couldn't get life insurance and blah, 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 or life insurance lapsed and they didn't know it. You no know, situations like that stuff happens. I have family and friends that were buried because the, the, the insurance, la- it was just a bad sort of set of circumstances. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about you people who refuse to get life insurance, but you can go to the club, you can buy a pair of red bottoms, you can pop bottles into the club with the sparklers and in, 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 in the VIP section, you can rent the cars, go on trips, you can do all that stuff, but you don't have no damn life insurance. You're the people that I'm talking to. Because you do have family, you do have friends, you do have people that are going to be left to take care of your remains. You dig? Somebody got to bury you. And like I said, I'm not being insensitive to the people who, you know, certain situations, they couldn't get life insurance or it just was something that happened and they didn't even realize what was going on. And they end up having to do a GoFundMe or whatever. I'm not talking about those situations. I'm not stupid and I'm not insensitive, right? I'm talking about you clowns that can do all this traveling and do all this stuff 
but I ain't got no life insurance. Right? I don't care. <sighs> Old, young, whatever. Because here's the thing. If y'all don't sit up, if we don't sit down and have these conversations about wills and life insurance and what's going to happen if something happens to you, where's this, where's this money coming from? Everybody, I'm just be honest. My, I, I buried my mom, you know, me, my brother, my sister. Uh, I'll just say that the average funeral cost about twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000, right? That's average. My mom had a will and she had insurance. It, it wasn't organized. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I still, uh, rest in peace, Bob. I know you probably looking, shaking your head like this fool. But I got to tell it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still had to look through bags of paperwork to find it. I knew she had it. But, you know, and I get it. Some people are just, they're not thinking that they, something's going to happen to them. So they're not really prepared. But it, Thank God that my mom at least had a will and some insurance. I didn't have to come out of my pocket to bury my mom. Her insurance took care of that. Her life insurance took care of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would have came out of my pocket if I had to. But she didn't put me in that position where I had to. You, you dig what I'm saying? She didn't put me in a position where I had to make a choice between between feeding my family that's living or burying my mom that's dead. She didn't put me in that position between a rock and a hard place. And so many of you out there that's putting your family in these positions where they have to do a GoFundMe or they have to sell chicken dinners at the church because you here's the thing about it. This, and I know people out there gonna make all th- all kind of excuses. Well, I couldn't get life insurance. I blah blah blah. Really, let's be clear. Ninety percent of these, ninety nine percent of people can get life insurance. You know what I'm saying? First of all, people. Ah, oh, well, if I put down, um, I got this illness and I got that illness, they're not gonna insure me. Bull. You you know the rest. I'm trying to stop cussing, but you know, uh, most insurance companies they ain't coming out to your house with no thermometer and uh, what's the, what's the, what the doctors wear around their uh, they neck stethoscope. Ain't nobody coming to your house with that mess to have you to to make sure you, you know what I'm saying what you're putting on this paperwork that you is correct. They're not doing that. So stop acting like you can't get no life insurance because the average person can get life insurance, and most people ain't even telling. The insurance people, what's what's going on? I'm not trying to incite fraud or whatever the situation is, but let's be real about it. They ain't coming out to check nothing. They just taking your word for it. You fill out a piece of paper. It's real simple. The average insurance for I say for twenty thousand dollars is twenty dollars a month, forty dollars a month. I don't care if it's a hundred dollars a month. You can go out to the club and pop bottles. You can go on trips. You have this habit and this habit. You can buy weed. You know what I'm saying? You can go play golf. That's an expensive hobby. We do all of these things, but we don't get no damn life insurance. I'm going to tell you like this. You put into, (laughs) and it might sound bad, but it is what it is. You take it for what it's worth. You're putting too much reliability on the people that's left. You're thinking that, oh, they got it. He's going to take care of me. I'll ball you up and put you in a paper bag and bury you in the backyard next to the, uh, the, the gerbil that died last month. That'll be your burial. You know what I'm saying? And I know that sounds bad or whatever, but here's the thing. You're putting me in a position. You're putting everybody that doesn't have insurance. You're putting the people that's left in a position to make life changing decisions. Because like I said, the average funeral and that was, you know, 
for my mom, that was years ago. I don't know how much it's probably, I'm pretty sure it's more than twelve, thirteen, thirteen thousand dollars You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the number is. I ain't pricing funerals. But I'm sure that it's probably went up a little bit. So now, the daughter or the son that's left because their mom or dad or whoever didn't have a life insurance policy that has a family and they might have a family that has, you know, family member, daughter of their own might have special needs, college money, everything that we planned for the future of our kids. Now I'm faced with this bill over here. I got to bury my mom or bury my dad and pay out of my pocket. Now I'm taking food and money out of my family's, you know what I'm saying? Away from my family. Because my mama and my dad didn't have sense enough to have an insurance policy. And we can sit up and play all day like people, like I said, like people can't get insurance. Let's stop it. 90, 90% of people that's listening to this podcast ain't even, that's, that don't have insurance, hadn't even tried or don't want it. Or don't think is necessary. That's a fact. It's necessary, people. It's very necessary. And just like not having a will is selfish, not having insurance is just, is more selfish because now, now you're costing somebody money. Now the, the person that's living is taking money away from their family, their situation. To bury your ass. You see what I'm saying? That's selfish. And like I said, you're putting too much faith into the living. Because if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. You, you might not. I know you might want an elaborate funeral with, 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 with doves flying and all of that. And trumpets playing. But that, ain't, that might not be the one you get. Because you didn't have insurance. You can't expect somebody to do that for you. You don't know, you know what I'm saying? You can't count somebody else's pockets, especially when you're dead and gone. That's selfish. 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 What's the moral to the story? It's real simple and I ain't going to even drag it out. Get you a will and some life insurance, period. Don't be so selfish and inconsiderate that family and friends that are left behind will have to fight and argue over your stuff. Because it's not about getting stuff. It's about not having to grieve and argue and fight as a result of someone's death. Thankfully, me and my wife don't need something that's left from a deceased family member. I made sure of that. Not a building, not a car, nothing. We good over here. But that doesn't mean we don't want something to remember a loved one by. Will you be the one arguing and fighting over property and clothes, but not making sure the person's stuff you're fighting over had a will or insurance? Like I said, don't let the state and courts get involved. It can be years before you see a dime. That's why these conversations are so important. No one's trying to kill you off mama, daddy, grandpa, grandma, sister, brother. But we should not be left with grieving and a bunch of foolishness. Because we all know, especially y'all players out there with four or five baby mamas, it's going to be like UFC out in these streets over your stuff. Don't be that guy, especially if you have kids. Ladies, you too. We don't need your new husband and boyfriend fighting your kids for the car. Write your will, get some insurance, and please don't be that selfish. And this has been the Unapologetic Relationship Podcast with your host, Jay Riggins, brought to you by the amazing folks at the Popeye Network. And you can catch this nail biting podcast every other Saturday on all platforms you get your podcast. And don't forget to pick up the amazing book, What a Man Really Wants to Say About Relationships, Revised and Unapologetic, written by me, Jay Riggins, on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and my website and all the podcast info you need are in the show notes. Once again, thank you for listening. And remember to be unapologetically you. Thank you.